Over the next few minutes, you're going to hear how to talk to a friend who's talking about her body in a toxic way around your kids. And welcome back to Sitting in a Car. I'm Sarah Sprout and I sit in a car each week answering a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. And let's read the whole question. I have a friend who constantly talks about her body image in a toxic way, other people's bodies as well as her own, and often around my kids. I feel I need to talk to her about it, but I don't really know how. I do say to her, please don't talk about my gorgeous friend like that when she calls herself fat or disgusting, but addressing comments she makes in front of my kids about people on TV looking awful are really tricky to approach. So the answer to this question comes from the courage courage pillar inside the Evolved Family Method. And the courage pillar is a collection of strategies and techniques to talk about really complex issues, speak up about complex issues in a way that builds deeper connection. And you know, everything we talk about in sitting in a car, it's not just about correcting problems we see in the world or giving our child information about something sensitive. Of course, we do that too, though. It's far more about building connection, creating relationships where the people we love and care about feel heard and understood and are able to come to us with problems or issues or complexities. And usually we talk about creating connection with our kids around or the child we are raising But sometimes we're trying to create connection with our friends or other members of our family. So what you may do if you have a situation or a question like this would be to, exactly as this person has done, say to your friend, please don't talk about your gorgeous friend, my gorgeous friend like that. Or it's possible that you don't even feel like you can make a statement like that. So you sit quietly maybe inside you're cringing at what she's saying. Um, You might also even be thinking about whether you can save this relationship. You might imagine in your head what will happen, worst case scenario, if you talk to your friend about this and she gets upset or angry. And doing all those things makes absolute sense. I understand why you might naturally take action or not take action at all because many of us were not brought up with the skills to speak up for our values or beliefs that we hold that may be offensive or in conflict with the people that are around us. We may even have been raised with the priority being keeping everyone happy. No one may have said that, let's just be clear. Um, specifically that might not have said that, but there could have been signs and signals that picking up, speaking up for ourselves and speaking up for what's right, if it causes ructions in our community or in our family, then it might be seen as somehow dangerous or wrong or rude. So this sort of attitude or way of being is not something that will have been specifically taught to you or taught to me, but we will have, have observed it in our family or in our wider social group as we were growing up. I've learnt that when we parents or other caring adults who are raising kids act in this way, do which is do what will lead to the least amount of conflict. It's a sign that there's a silent connection breaker present. I call that a silent connection breaker. It's present in our thinking and it influences our actions. A silent connection breaker is something that isn't said that breaks the connection either with the other adult, in this case that's how it would be, or with our child or children. The silent connection breaker, when it's present, it will cause you to feel um, like your authenticity is being damaged or compromised in some way. You might be watching your words very carefully. You might Also notice that you have emotions or thoughts that you can't share with the other person. And your energy, your focus is moved away from 
being with the friend, in this case the friend, who you obviously care for and enjoy, um, over to how to manage this difficult problem and situation. Now, all those feelings make absolute sense. I understand why you would feel that way. This is a complex thing. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to talk to a friend who talks about her body in a toxic way around your kids so that you can get away from the silent connection breaker that's happening in the moment and instead start working to build your evolved communicating family. Step one, talk to your kids when she's not around. You have a great opportunity to talk about body image in a way that focuses on your love and care for someone else. So you might say something like, um, or something about that you feel worried about your friend. We'll call her Siobhan, right? I feel worried about my friend Siobhan. I love and care for her so much, but I'm noticing that the world has taught her something really damaging and sad about bodies. And then you can go into detail about what that might be. So, for example, um, I remember having a conversation with a young person in my family who was still in primary school and we were talking about bodies and how the world has a well it tells us lies essentially about bodies and that sometimes even adults believe these lies we were talking specifically about how different genders different gendered bodies have different rules um, and that sometimes one gender their body gets spoken about and policed more than, say, another gender. So one day he came home from school and he told me the story that a teacher had talked to a girl in their class about what she was wearing. And we were able to talk about that that was an example of what we had talked about that was only in theory, but he'd actually seen a practical example of this playing out. Now, I've created a free resource called The Body Image Conversation, and I'll put a link somewhere around this episode so you can go over and get that little mini training. And it will help you have conversations about body image with kids in a way that feels natural and open. And also without the fear of getting it wrong in some way or making it worse for your kids when it comes to this whole body image thing. Point number two. How could it be possible to show empathy in the moment when she's saying something unkind about her body or about a person's body on TV? Now, what comes naturally to us would be to not draw attention to the negative comment. Purely because we don't maybe want to draw our kids' attention to it if they maybe didn't hear it or if it sort of went over their head. But remember, this is the silent connection breaker in practice, that natural inclination to minimize things like this. So instead, what we can do is empathize. And empathy can sound something like this. The culture we live in makes it super difficult to see all bodies as beautiful, right? Or you could say, it must feel like there's nothing good to like about your body. Now, I imagine if you just heard me say that thing, that a part of you might cringe and that's natural because most of us have a default setting that if we hear something about negative body image or toxic diet culture, we will try and make it quieter by saying less about it. But we're doing the opposite. We're saying more about it because we want to create a counter cultural message that our, mess that our kids hear us talk about all the time. And in this case, your kid, your friend gets to hear it as well. And notice how we're not saying that's not right. We're agreeing instead. And we're saying, yeah, that's really hard. It's completely natural to feel unhappy with our body because of the world in which we live. Step number three, ask for her support. Find a time when she hasn't said anything specific about toxic body image or her sadness about the way she looks and bring up the subject of how you are trying to give your kids a fighting chance at um, feeling good about their body. Now, 
this might feel complicated and difficult. So there's a formula can you, you can use for this. So a difficult conversation usually starts with you explaining how you feel about talking about this. So something like, I'd really like to talk to you about something, um, but it feels difficult. And what I'm worried will happen is it will cause a fracture or a conflict between us. But what I hope will happen is I can feel closer to you by sharing this difficult thing that I'm going through at the moment. And then you say the thing. So the thing that I need to talk about is how I can help my kids grow up with a more accepting sense of their body being awesome than, than what I did growing up and what you did growing up. And then you could grow, go into more detail that you're pushing back against the body image police that the kids are seeing on TV or they might be hearing about it on social media or from other kids at school and you're wondering if she could help. And you're starting small. You can start by saying something like, when we watch TV, um, we're trying to do our best not to comment on people's bodies on the TV. Apart from saying something like, why is everyone in this show thin? And we're then commenting that that's not how bodies are in real life. We all come in different shapes and sizes, right? So you're asking for her help rather than telling her how she has to be. And you're phrasing it in a way, um, I was wondering if you could help us with this important part of raising our kids. Now, earlier on, I told you I had a little resource that can help you with the language around body image. So that link, if you would like to find it, will be somewhere around this episode. Or if you'd like to type it into your browser, it's sarahsproul.com forward slash body image. sarahsproul.com forward slash body image. So you've just learned how to talk to a friend who talks about her body in a toxic way around your kids. But these suggestions, they don't do you much good if you don't have the skills and the abilities to sit with really complex emotions. Um, complex emotions like fear or worry or embarrassment or tension or anger, um, those Emotions can show up when we have conversations like this, both in ourselves and in other people. So that's why inside the kindness pillar of the Evolved Family Method, it's all about how we care for ourselves, what strategies we can use to manage emotions so that we can show up for conversations about really sensitive things, whether that's with our friends or our kids. And that's one of the central parts of being able to build an evolved communicating family, isn't it? That we are able to cope with our own emotions and maybe the emotions of our children or the other adults around us as we do this subversively wonderful, different way of talking about sensitive things. Whether that's body image or how babies are made or periods or what have you. So if you would like to learn the complete evolved family method, find the link somewhere around this video, lots of links this week. Um, that way you can leave your details and I can tell you the next time the Evolve School opens up. And that's sitting in a car for another week where I've helped you with a question to help you raise your confident and caring young person who respects themselves and the people around them. Bye for now. Just FYI too, the hat today is made by one of my very gorgeous friends who can crochet like I've never seen anyone crochet before. So shout out to Jemima for the headwear today. Right, where was I? Where was I? Got distracted. <laughs> Her young... <laughs> I'll start that bit again.